Hi all, welcome back to Clickshare.com. In this video, let's see how to use cross table prefix. As you are aware, ClickView is not just a dashboard tool. In fact, it has a very powerful scripting engine for ETL process. And within ClickView, transformation functionality is provided as both script and also as the graphical user interface. And the cross table prefix is one of my favorite functionalities of ClickView. What it does, cross table prefix will transpose the physical table. That is, it converts the wide horizontal table into tall thin table. This will be very useful technique if you wanted to create a table which is in the form of name value pairs. Let's quickly jump into ClickView and let's see some examples on how to use cross table. So let me go to ClickView. Let me use Control E to go to script editor. And let's create an OLEDB connection. Connect. And uh, let's select the database. This might take a few seconds. There we go. Click on test connection. OK. And click on OK. OK. So we have the connection in here. Now let's select a simple table from database, which is SQL Server database. This might take a few more seconds. There we go. And uh, let's select customers. And uh, I'll leave the preceding load checkbox on. And let, let's have them as columns and click on OK. OK. If you see here, this is my SQL select statement. And this is the preceding load. Let me just format this so that it will be readable. OK. So now we have all the columns. Let's go ahead and reload. This might take a few seconds. It's done. So we have 18,869 rows. Fantastic. Click on OK. And let me add a table box. Cancel. Add a table box. And let's add all the fields. And I'll move the customer key on the top. On OK. Okay, if you see here we have some null values, but we have all the fields in here. So this is your horizontal table as is. Now let's say if you wanted to change this table, flip it to a vertical format, as in you're transposing your horizontal table into the vertical table, you need to use the cross table prefix. So let's see the syntax and how we can use it. Let me go back to script editor and you will be using cross table. And there are three parameters here. So if I put the bracket, the first parameter is the attribute field name. So you can give any field name you wanted to call and this will be your attribute field name. So in this case, I'll call this as my attribute name. And the second parameter is the attribute value itself. So I'll call this my attribute value. You can call whatever you wanted. And the third parameter is the field position or the number of fields you wanted to skip while transforming the data. By default, the value will be one. So you, even if you don't specify, it will be one. So in this case, I'll not specify anything. And just to summarize, the attribute name, or in this case, my attribute name, are the list of field names. And the my attribute value are the list of underlying field values within these fields. So let's go ahead and save this and reload it. And if you see, the number of rows would expand. Yes, it was 18,869 rows earlier. Now it's 439667 rows. Let's click on close. And now if you see, we have these three fields. So let's go to properties. And let's select 
So all these fields are gone right now because they are field values. They are not fields anymore. So let's select attribute field name and field value and add them. Click on OK. It will be a massive, massive table. Now uh, let me go ahead and add one more list box and this will be customer key. Now what you see here is, let's select customer key 10. So now if you see, I have all the values instead of being in columns, you have all of them in rows. That's my attribute name. And the corresponding value of address line one, birth date, so on and so forth, have the values in here. So you can go ahead and select, for example, education, and you can remove the customer key here. In this way, you will see the customer key numbers and you will also see the attribute name. We are right now just looking at the education and you can see the qualifications. So let's say that you wanted to add one more field. So let's go back to script. Now we will use a third parameter. Let's say that you wanted the gender. So let's move gender because the position of gender is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we don't want to skip 12 fields. Rather, we only wanted to skip gender and the customer key. So cut it and you can paste it here. And in fact, you can have a line break. Now you can specify number two here. Save this and reload. Again, this might take a couple of minutes. Okay, now we have 421183. So we have same set of information, but we also have gender as a field right now. So I can go back and select list box, select gender, and you can remove gender from here so we have same set of information now if you select only female customers you will see the associated customer keys and at the same time your cross table is still active so let's go back to script let's say that in this case you wanted to keep gender as a separate field and also part of your cross table then let's go ahead and copy this and paste it here and uh, you can rename it customer gender and then reload close and now instead of education, let's look for customer gender. Let me add a list box. It's easy to search on the list box. Attribute name. Yes, we have customer gender here. Now, if you see here, all the customers are female customers. Now, if you remove it, you will see male and female customers here. So going back to script again, you can add more number of fields in here to create them as separate fields or you can add fields as part of the cross table. So cross table is a very, very simple and powerful tool for transformation. I've just used to solve many problems. I'm sure you can use it as well. I hope this helps. I would encourage you to participate in ClickView question of the day where I ask ClickView questions and you can answer them to assess your ClickView knowledge. You would see instant results and you can compare with other developers and designers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Click on OK. Let me go to my blog and I've already opened this page. So if you see here, I've already asked 122 questions and you can select one of the answers. Generally, they are multiple choice questions. And then you can click on continue where you will see the result and you will also see where you stand compared to other developers. 
And if you wanted to access the archived questions, you have all of them in here. You can click on the hyperlink to answer the other questions. So thank you for your time. Good luck.